Hello, and thank you for joining us for another inspiring message from Journey Church. To learn more about our ministries, please visit us online at journeychurch.org. Now here is today's message. Let's pray one more time and then we'll get straight away into God's word. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We honor you. We give you glory. We thank you for these moments that we spent in your throne room in worship. And Lord, we long for your second coming where we get to worship you with other believers from all eternity for all eternity, Lord God. We just long to be with you. And today, as we start this new series with the topic being Advent, we remember your first coming. We remember this baby that was born in a manger, that was the savior of the world, and we long with expectation for your second coming when you return to make your church, your bride, whole and redeem mankind once and for all time. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, amen. Amen. Say this with me. God God is great. His word is true, and it works in my life. Do you believe that today? Amen. Then we're going to go ahead and get into God's Word today. Um, We are starting a new message series this morning on Advent. Um, You might not be familiar with the term. We'll define it in just a moment. We just came off of a very long series on the book of Nehemiah where we went verse by verse, chapter by chapter. I hope you enjoyed it. If you missed it, all of them are now online. You can certainly go back and watch any of those. That series was very deep scripturally. Today, I'm not going to go super deep scripturally. Uh, We'll get into that in the week. Ahead. Today's a little bit of an intro for what we're going to be experiencing in the next few weeks. And I think about what Thanksgiving is all about and what Christmas is all about. And we want to talk about that a little bit today. And a big part of that has to do with spending time with God and remembering who Jesus is, spending time hopefully with family and friends, sharing stories of. Christmas is old and then making memories of Christmas is new. That's part of what Christmas is supposed to be all about. Would you agree? Now, sometimes it's divulged into some different things that we'll talk about today as well. We'll go in both directions. So let's talk about this term Advent because if you're like me, up until a few years ago, I I had never even really heard of it. How many of you are familiar with the term Advent? You came from maybe a traditional church background. So maybe half and half, right? I didn't come from traditional church circles, so I wasn't familiar with this term, but I think there's great beauty in this concept of Advent, so we'll dig into it. Simply, what does it mean? It means coming or arrival, and churches throughout history have celebrated the time of Christ's birth, which was the first Advent, as a time of remembering the hope that Jesus Christ brought into the world. At the same time, there's really this double focus. Symbols in Orthodox Christianity use the symbol of infinity, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, because they wanted to remember that he was once and he will come again. So they have all these symbols that are mixed in with Christianity, and in the weeks ahead, we'll talk about a few more of them in in greater detail, like Christmas trees and wreaths, and all of these things actually have biblical connotations and meanings if you understand them, and I'm hoping that as we dig into a few of them in the weeks ahead, when you look at these things, it'll add something new to your spirit, where when you see them, it'll just remind you of your relationship with Jesus Christ in a different way. So while celebrating and remembering the first advent, Christ's birth, there's also this spirit of expectation, anticipation, preparation, and longing for Jesus to come again to receive his bride. So advent can really be described as a cycle. It starts with this unbridled joy as we talk about Jesus, the newborn king, and then it moves into these seasons of reflection, of examination, even repentance. It might make us feel a bit uncomfortable comfortable examining our lives and Christians in the past for some 2,000 years have often even celebrated this season in fasting do you hear that that's strange right isn't that quite different than when we think of um, Thanksgiving when we think of Christmas and this season in between isn't it turned into a very big season of excess to a degree I mean I feel some excess from Thanksgiving this week anybody else there with me right we feel, we feel that, and in America, it's turned into something quite different maybe than it was for the previous 2,000 years. So I think it's important that we examine that in a little bit greater detail. But it sounded so unusual to me, and maybe it does to you. But I also think that there's some great beauty in it. 
If Christians for 2,000 years have celebrated the time leading into Christ's birth in this way, do we in the contemporary church really need to abandon all of these practices? I don't think so. I think there's aspects of them that are just wonderful that we need to rebring back into the life of this church. And in fact, um, this series came about not by our own doing. There was a church on the West Coast called Imagio Day, and they started a series with the same title a number of years ago. And they did so as a group of pastors gathered together, and they talked about how frustrating it is to be a pastor during the month of December. And you might be like, Eric, what are you talking about? Why would that be a frustrating time? Do you know that there's some interesting statistics that we'll look at in the days ahead? But oftentimes the overriding fact is that Christianity, our relationship with Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the saints can become a distraction during this season rather than being the main thing if we're not careful. If we don't put Jesus first intentionally in our life during this season, he could actually be a distraction. In fact, for many, those who are not in this room, you know, usually there's about twice as many people in this room. Interesting fact, the lowest church attended days of the year are usually this weekend and next weekend. How interesting is that? Think about the connotations of that, and, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot to explore there. We'll dig into that in just a moment, but it's very interesting. You would think that the month of December would just be a time where people are lit on fire for God, where they'd be like, oh, Jesus is coming, kind of like the time in the season leading into Easter. You would think the church would be packed out, right? But the world has got us so busy at times where church can become even secondary in our lives if we're not careful, right? So... Let's go on and continue to talk about what God is doing in this season. And before I, before I take the next step, um, a few weeks as we celebrate the season, there's different stages that people have gone through during the time of Advent. And there's a church called the Church at Brook Hills in Alabama that was kind enough to write an app for the iPhones and the Androids. And I put a link out there to that on Facebook and on my blog or on my page on Facebook too. If you'd like to follow along during the season with daily devotionals and daily reflections, they have a great app for that. So go out there and check it out. I believe it's free through today. So they're giving it away free. And after that, it's only a dollar. So if you'd like to follow along with us in some of those posts, go out there and check out my Facebook page and download that app. It'll be a good way to follow along with us. So Thinking about how Christians of old have celebrated this season is quite different than what our experience is today. So they went through these seasons of joy, but then these seasons of reflection and back to joy when it comes back to Christmas time. So we want to go through some of those emotions in the weeks ahead, but let's contrast and compare how we celebrate Christmas in America versus the story of Christmas as found in the Bible. And um, I think a big part of Christmas and Thanksgiving is really storytelling. I think it's, it's sitting around with family and friends and maybe taking the iPhone or the Android or the tablet device and throwing it away for a few hours and sitting across from one another at that Thanksgiving table and just hanging out and, and maybe remembering and telling stories. And those are some of my favorite memories as a kid as I would gather together my great-grandmother, my grandmother Arlene and my, and their family, they had a big family. They had about 1,100 square foot house and they had eight children in this house so everybody was like double bunked up in the home and uh, we would go over there for Christmas time when I was a kid so the grandkids were starting to be there and it was always so fascinating as we would show up and as a little kid it felt so overwhelming and the my, my family had no real means and we <laughs> would walk in but yet there would be uh, it, seemingly as a kid Christmas presents that were lined all the way up to the door so you'd walk in and you'd just be blown away and amazed as a little kid and then you'd get to sit down and hear stories that they would tell and I, I used to love that part of it sitting around and hearing them tell those stories and I can still remember my aunts telling a story because when you have eight kids in a house that size there's all kinds of stories you know that they would be telling it and, and like cats running through fans and you name it they had crazy stories that they would tell but as a kid, that was one of my fondest memories, walking into Grandma Arlene's house.
house. And then as I began to get a, a little bit older, it started to be time to make memories of our own. And one of the first memories that I remember uh, with Mary Jo, we were 17 years old, and I used to love to decorate the outside of our house for my parents. That was kind of my job as a teenager. They would decorate the inside. I would decorate the outside of the home. So she came, and she didn't know what she was getting herself into because we went overboard in those days. And she came and started to help us set up. So the one trick that she had was uh, she thought it would be funny to write a note into there for the girlfriend who would be with her next year and try to warn her, or with me next year, I should say. So she's anticipating that she wasn't going to be with me next year. You get what I'm saying? Like She's like, okay, if you're here and you're reading this and this is the first box that you're opening up, run because you're going to be here for like four more hours decorating all this stuff. And there's a story she hates when I tell. Um, she met my family, the entire family, first on Thanksgiving. So she um, had this car, this little truck that she was very proud of. It was one of the first vehicles she paid for herself. Last night, I said it was $400. She said it was $4,000. I said she paid way too much for this vehicle, even if it was $400. So she lived in a place called Hialeah. I lived in a place called Miami Springs. It was about 15 minutes apart. And she's driving to our house to meet the family for the very first time. And as she's driving there, the hood of the truck blows up while she's driving down the highway, right? So some people were kind enough to meet her on the side of the road. They remove the hood of the truck and put it in the back bed of the truck, right? So she, in Miami at this time, it's still like 95 degrees, so you're like sweating and everything. So she makes it down to the house. She pulls up into the driveway, and she has her truck with everything all opened up. And, you know, she gets there. And then me and my ignorance, not thinking that this was cool, I'm like, oh, this is so cool coming out and see so she's like embarrassed to no end that she's showing up and her truck is like this so this was her grand introduction to the family you know and uh, she hates when I tell that story but it was part of our story nonetheless and those are some of the funny moments and there was other very difficult and challenging moments in Christmas time and Christmas season as well I can think back to certain Christmases that I'd rather forget, maybe because I drank way too much or I was still in the midst of my addiction and I would run out to go get drugs around that time rather than um, you know, hanging out with the family and the difficulties and challenges and angst that that brought up in the midst of it. Or Mary Jo's father actually passed away on Christmas night, so it's a very difficult time for her to think about. There are many years where we would do everything to put out Christmas, and then I would wake up the day after Christmas, and it was gone because she didn't want that memory anymore. So I realize for each of us, there's different emotions that we go through. For some, this season is a very joyous time. For others, it's a very difficult time of life, and we need to be sensitive to both of those things during this season. So wherever you find yourself here, I hope that you know you're among family while you're here today, and we love you, and we want to get back to the heartbeat of what Christmas is really all about. So there are many more. I won't share too many other stories with that today, but have you noticed that somewhere along the line, Christmas has gotten so commercialized? Am I wrong in saying that? Is there anybody who thinks differently in here? So let's talk about how things turn today. You know, what's going on today with our society where um, a few years ago when I was thinking about this kind of a topic, we still we had Black Friday, right? And you'd wake up and people would get up at 2 in the morning to go wait in line to be at Walmart or whatever the store would be the following morning to go take advantage of those sales. And now retailers have even conditioned us where for the first time they're pushing it back into Thanksgiving itself. And for many of you, it might be a good tradition. You and your family do go out and you enjoy it and you don't beat anybody up. But I know I woke up the next morning and the first things that I saw on the news was the YouTube riots of people at Walmart like killing each other over a toaster and things of that nature. And it, it, you got to admit there's something weird in this. I mean, especially when they start to infringe on Thanksgiving. So, like, you have to now have Thanksgiving lunch instead of Thanksgiving dinner. And by next year, it'll be Thanksgiving breakfast, right? So, you all you, like turkey for breakfast? I don't know. But they, they're moving it in this direction, right? It's kind of strange. So, now everybody's having dinner and everything earlier. And you go from being thankful and hanging around at the table to go beating each other up over the next newest Xbox. It's the weirdest concept that I could think of. But 